Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a safe and accurate way to calibrate your current sensor. I've done videos before on calibrating current sensors because we all know that doing the charge it and compare the milliamp hours to how much used in flight is really not a good way to do it. Firstly, the charger itself isn't the most accurate way of measuring the energy going back into the battery. Not only that, but when the charger is charging, it is balanced charging. That means it's putting energy in and taking energy out. So it's always gonna read higher than the capacity used in flight. So it's really not an accurate way of setting your current meter. Now, I showed you a video a while back on how you can do this with your aircraft, but a lot of people don't really like it because it involves actually having the motor live and the prop spinning. And we're taking a measurement from the actual aircraft while it's working. This method doesn't do that at all. It's using the same tool that I used in that one, but we're using a bit of hardware. And it actually means we can calibrate the current sensor before we even stick it in the plane. So what is this equipment? This right here is an electronic load and its job is purely to pull power. It's used a lot in electronics testing. So if you're testing a power supply on a PCB, that sort of thing, you would use an electronic load to actually pull it out. What we're gonna be using it to do is actually pull a load out in place of our motor. So this will actually be, you know, pulling the electrons through the flight controller at the amp level that we set on here. So unfortunately to do this method, you will need this tool, but it's not actually that expensive. This one I got for 26 pounds off of AliExpress. I'll put a link in the description. They're usually about 35, I got it on sale. So what I would recommend is use the link that I put up as a reference and then find one yourself, which is a bit cheaper. They all look like this, but there's usually two models. There's one that's got an orange fan, which is 150 watts. And this one with the multicolored fan is 180 watts. The price difference, go for the 180 watts. The other thing that you'll need is a way to connect it to the flight controller. I just bought some crocodile clips off of Amazon, cut the end off and stuck them in here. So I can just clip this onto the flight controller I don't need to do any soldering. It makes it a much easier operation. One other tool that you'll need is a multimeter. Now I imagine most people in the hobby will have a multimeter. So this shouldn't be a problem. One thing that you also need to do is make a cable for it. Now this cable is very simple. It's basically to measure the amps. So what we have here is two XT60s and some, I'm using 12 AWG here, but 14 would be fine as well. So with this cable, I've just used XT60s. You could use XT90s and then use adapters to bring it down to XT60 or XT30. Then you've got you know a whole range of connectors that we're gonna use. And it's really simple. All you need to do is imagine that these connect cables are just joining them together. So positive to positive, negative to negative. Then all you're gonna do is cut the positive lead. I mean, I've actually made it slightly longer, but, um, if you make it out of two pieces of cable, just cut the positive lead and then add these bullet connectors on. Now these look like four millimeter bullet connectors, but make sure to check with your multimeter and they just need to go in like that. So that's all the tools and cables. So the last thing I'm just gonna go over quickly before we actually dive into it is the flight controller. Now this I've pulled out the box, I've flashed it with full chip arrays and all I've done is set up the defaults and done the accelerometer calibration. So it's basically completely fresh. There's nothing else on here. I've not done anything to it other than solder on the battery lead, which I've measured out for the aircraft that it's going in. So what we're gonna do first is head into iNav and check out the current sensor scale. Okay, so let's connect. And what we're gonna do is go into configuration. And what we're looking for is we have current sensor scale here we have offset here and we have voltage here. They're the ones that we're interested in. Now, what I would do is first set it up to the manufacturer's recommended scale, and that's a good place we can start from. With a lot of these targets, what's on there will be correct, but some flight controllers have multiple flight controller boards for the same target. And this Speedy B is a prime example. We have this full size one, and the mini one both use the same target, but the mini has a different current sensor scale. So what I'm gonna do is go to the Speedy Boo website, we'll go to the specifications, 
and we're just going to check what the scale should be. So we have voltage sensor 1,100 in INAV, which is what it's set to, and we have 195 in INAV, which is also what it's set to. So that's all good. So we don't need to change anything on the flight controller, but if you did, just put the correct values in here, save and reboot, and we're good to go. While we're at the computer, I'm just gonna show you the page we're gonna use on the website to actually do this. So let's get rid of Speedy B. This is my website, mrd-rc.com. We're gonna go useful tools and INAV current sensor calibration. And obviously we don't need to worry about the red alert anymore because we've not got a prop on here. We've not even got an ESC on here. So we can safely do this without <laughs> incurring any injury unless we decide to stick our fingers in the PC fan. Don't do that. So the first thing we need to do is enter the current sensor scale, which is 195. So if you haven't seen my earlier tutorial, what we do is we take the reading that INAV says, and we enter it in this side, and this side will be the reading from our multimeter. The electronic load, of course, has a reading on it as well, but the multimeter will probably be slightly more accurate, so we're gonna take that. So let's put that to the side and let's get configurator there. Right, so one thing you're gonna need is a battery that can put out the correct current. I mean, we're not gonna be going super crazy with this. So what I'm gonna do is use this pack here, which is good for 30 amps. I'm using 4S, obviously make sure your flight controller can handle the voltage if you're going for a bigger pack but this is absolutely fine for what we're gonna do. Right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is actually measure the voltage. So all you need to do is plug your battery in. I'm obviously needing to use an adapter. This has an XT30 on it. Plug that in, it's the first time, so hopefully there's no magic smoke. All good. Right, and we're gonna set this to voltage. And what we wanna do is compare the battery to the flight controller. So this is not the best way of measuring a battery voltage, but it will do. I'm going to measure it on the balance connector and we can see here we've got 16.45. So now what we want is to see what's happening in INAV. We have 16.37. So we do need to adjust this. What I do want to make is a rig where I can just plug in a balance lead and do it like that. It'd be so much easier. So now I just need to make this the same as this. So what we need to do is change this slightly. So I'm gonna try increasing. So let's do a save and reboot. I think it's going the right way. So let's go a bit higher. Let's try seven. That's a little bit too high. Right, so it's sort of in between 11.05 and 11.06. So what I usually do is err on the side of caution and go for the one that's slightly lower. It's better that you have a bit more voltage in the battery than it's reading. So you've got sort of a, a little bit extra, a little bit in reserve. That's actually looking pretty good when I hold the probes on properly. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So we have now calibrated our voltage. Now we can get on and do the current sensor. So I'm gonna turn this off. Let's disconnect those. And now we need to set up our electronic load. So I'm gonna disconnect this power. So the battery end here, so this is the battery end. So I'm gonna plug that into there and I'm gonna plug that into there, plug in there and I'm gonna leave that until later. All right, so I disconnected the flight controller. I'm just gonna connect the crocodile clips. So obviously we need on the ground and on positive with these you obviously need to make sure that they are definitely going the other side of the shunt otherwise it won't work there's usually a gap between the positive and the esc positive just make sure you you get it on the gap and if you've got two options for the esc positive i usually go the furthest one away from the battery positive just to make sure it's all hooked up properly so let's plug it back into INAV. We can connect the power and we can turn on the load. What we need to do is set this up for amps, which is over here. And you can see at the moment, we've got our resting amps of well, 65.3 milliamps. And of course this is turned off, so we're not actually drawing any current at the moment. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take the readings. Now, as I mentioned earlier, 
we have this column here for the flight controller and this column here for the power meter. Now what we're going to be checking it against is this data right here. Now at the moment we're idle, it's not pulling anything through. And if you notice here that I say the minimum you want is one amp, which is usually underneath that, they're not that accurate. So what we're going to do is turn on the load and start pulling an amp through. So again, what we have here is the electronic load, are the amps that our flight controller is currently pulling through and our flight controller. So let's turn on the electronic load. And what we need to do is just jog through so that we're adjusting the amps and press the plus. Our load will start up and we'll pull an amp through. So you can see here we're pulling 1.06 amps. So that's what I'm going to put in the first box, 1.06. And we have 1.6, yeah, 1.69 on the flight controller. And basically what we're going to do is carry on going through adding more amps and taking readings from the flight controller and the multimeter. I'm going to go up to nine amps because these things will blow at 10 amps, but that's all we should really need to worry about. So I'm just going to press that to increase the load. We can see, we can see our current has increased here. So just let it stabilize 2.06. And what we have here is 2.71 in INAV. We'll go up here. I'm going to round that to 3.06. And INAV is 3.72. I'm just going to keep doing this exact same thing till we get to 9 amps. I won't bore you with the whole process because it's basically pushing this button, taking two readings, filling in the form. You've seen how to do that three times now. I'm sure you can work it out. I'll be back. Okay, the form is filled in. We can turn the load off. Don't worry, that will keep going until it cools down enough to turn the fan off. What we need to do is click the Calculate the Sensor Values button and we can see our new scale and offset. So the scale is actually pretty close, 196, but we do have an offset of 12.7. Now all we need to do is click Save and Reboot and then we'll just test it. So what I'm going to do is lower the load down to one amp while it's off. And then what we can do is verify it. So at the moment it's at zero. Don't worry too much about it. They're not that accurate underneath. So let's turn the load on and see what we have. So we're pulling through 1.07. It's saying 1.0403. Two point zero eight, and it's at two point zero six, three point zero nine, three point zero six, four point zero nine, four point zero eight, five point one, five point zero eight, six point one, six point zero nine. 7 7.1, 7.1, 8.1, 8.11, so yeah, and finally 9, 9.17, 9.13, they're pretty close, it's within a couple of hundredths of an amp, and with the accuracy of what we're working with, that's perfectly acceptable. So there you go, the current sensor is now calibrated. When we go flying with this, we know that it's gonna give us accurate readings. There's none of this messing about with how many milliamp hours did it discharge in flight and how much is the battery charger put back in. That's never right. No matter, no matter what anybody says, that is never right at all because the battery charger takes out and puts in. So it's always gonna be higher. So yeah, please never use that method. The method with the load here, nice and safe, 
and it's accurate it's very accurate i hope you guys found this video useful if you did please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe and the bell icon that will let you know when more videos come out that you may find useful it will also help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too so much simpler so much easier <laughs> just a way to do it thank you very much guys flying models like you stole and i'll see you on the next one